Hello. In the previous part, we worked on character animations and did some code for it. And I believe today is time to slightly expand on all of that and create some kind of a trigger system for our game. So here we have our two platforms. Actually, well, one thing that we're going to do to the platform prefab is we will actually open up the prefab. prefab. Where is it? And we will remove and the wall from behind. And then now that this is done, based on different platform, we're just going to scale this wall a little bit, move the other platform in, and just to see if we can move between two platforms if they're conjoined. If not, we will make this a, a single path. Where is it? So now that we have this, I'm just going to scale it. Actually, there is still a little bit of a gap. So maybe let's scale a little bit backward. There we go. So actually, rather than doing that, let's actually just go back to what we had previously. Let's just expand this indefinitely. For now, the camera focus point can go back to the front. Let's press play. Going to use a single. Um, where is it? Just a little single. Why is this so big? Because uh, I scaled it. Um, yeah, single one like this. I'm just going to unpack this. So, where is our camera focus point? So, we have one point here. I'll just create a second point for now. Let's call this one start. Let's call this one end and move them both out of the prefab for now. Where's the endpoint? About here. And let's go into our camera operator and just attach the end position here. And there you go. Just quickly give this a, chest, a test if it works well. Mm. Okay. There was camera. Let's select the camera. Oh yeah, because we need a UI piece. Where's the UI piece? That's right, we need a UI to move the camera. What happened to the UI? So we have a camera. Let's press play. Where's the UI? Scale with screen size. Is, is this slider just disappearing off the screen? I guess that must be it. Yeah, because there's like... Oh, I was... Um, I had a weird scale attached for some reason. Actually, the slider is still too small regardless, so... I'm just going to make it bigger. There we go. Now let's give it a try. So now it works fine. And what we want to do is we want to kind of section off uh, each area. So it's like a level of a sort. We need to update the um, the navigation anyway, because right now it's just this little area here. So we're just going to go to bake, clear, and bake it again. Now that we have this, let's just duplicate this wall and place it here. We'll be rebaking the project several times, definitely. So let's go back with the unit. Okay, so this is going to be our basically the first level for the game. So let's just remove this a little bit. Actually, we don't need the back walls uh, because this is as far as the navigation will go, regardless. So it's just not going to let us go through. the navigation. There you go, as you see. One thing we're going to do is we're going to add a nav mesh obstacle to each of the walls. And how does that change it? It just adds the edge so we can't go through these areas. So again, for this one, nav mesh obstacle. 
just carve it straight away and same with these ones nav mesh obstacle and you're just gonna carve it like so and now that we have these guys in let's just go now we're gonna create a third one this one is gonna be slightly different so what's gonna happen for this specific one we will actually change the color of this one so if you go into materials and let's just give it a different name so this one's going to be called a gate and we'll give it a different color of i guess blue and th this basically will just show the player that this wall is somehow different and there is something that can be done about this wall so let's press play see if the camera is in the correct position nope let's set start point slightly to the bit. it's actually taking way too long just to set up the project okay well that's good enough so now that we can move this around so we basically can walk here and well now we have a problem because we won't be able to get to the other side right so this is where the puzzle of the game comes in and what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate the units for now just to create a few of them <clears throat> Actually, another thing that I want to add is add controllers to the camera with W and A, but I will do that in the second once we complete the first level. So now that we have the units in here, we will actually assign, we need to assign them to our code. Uh, we should make it more automatic rather than this, but that, that can wait a little bit. Um, so let's create a box, a cube. Mm, let's make it bigger. Okay, and let's place one box in here. Uh, we're gonna play with colors a lot in this project. So this is the first one and let's go into materials and let's uh, give it a red color. However, what we're gonna do, so this is gonna be inactive. No, so this is gonna be trigger interactable. And we're gonna change it from opaque to transparent and now that we have the transparency we're just going to remove a little bit from the transparency and if we press play just to have a look at it we'll see that there is a this transparent box here right so for our transparent box we want to set dot trigger and we now want to add uh, some piece of code that will uh, disable this specific gate So let's create a new game object and let's call this a puzzle. And let's create a puzzle script, puzzle. Now, why is Unity being extremely slow today? I don't know. I'm just gonna reset the position for now. And this is gonna be trigger one and duplicate it on the other side, rename it as trigger two. And we will have another script called the trigger color. Now let's like, let's start separating the code a little bit because it's getting a bit confusing. So we're gonna have a player folder. We're gonna have puzzles folder like so. Player input can go into player, agent can go into player. Game manager will go into the game manager, obviously. Um, and both of these go into player as they're part of selection process, which is player mechanic. Could be actually in game management as well, but I mean, it's, it's just for our own convenience. One thing that we'll also do is we'll select every single player like this and so they tag this unit this is perfect so now that we have the triggers we let's just get the trigger color and we'll do the trigger color first let's go into materials real quick and create a second material okay 
to open both puzzle and trigger. So let's get rid of the default lines. Um, yeah, to the camera, what we're going to do with our later is just add update that will control the movement on top of the uh, little marker. Okay, so first in the trigger color, we want to have two sets of materials. So we'll do private material, and we, that's going to be an array. So this is going to be our active 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 material, let's call it. And we also need render. So private render, let's just call it rend. And then on start, we'll just make the rend equal to game object. No, this dot a component. And it's going to be render. And now we need on trigger enter. And on if other dot transform dot tag is equal to unit, because that's what a player will be, then we want to switch the active material to one from render. And we do that by doing render dot material is equal to this material, like so. And then on trigger exit, we'll just do the opposite of that. So we will do zero. And now let's call this in start as well. So we get the correct material. Now this currently will have a one problem, which we will tackle on later on. So set up the default values, and then we have on trigger enter change color to green when player enters, changes color to red when player exits, like so. Now let's create a green color that we are programming for. So let's just copy the red one. And let's call it trigger int green. Let's change that one to trigger and int red. So the green will now be green. And now if we click on both of these cubes, go into active materials, we will first attach the the red one as that's our default one, and then green as that's our second color. Now with this, our triggers will be correctly set. So let's select one of our guys and send them to each of their positions. And we are not getting a response, which is shocking. So let's have a look. Where did we go wrong? On trigger enter. Let's just do debug.log other dot transform.name and then let's just do plus one two just so we know we've went into this trigger position oh actually we know why it's not working because there's no rigid bodies attached to either of the components so we need to update our player by adding a rigid body and changing it from gravity to kinematic so for collisions to work, we do need to have a rigid body attached to an object. There we go. And now our cubes change color. And when we leave, they exit out of their color. So now that we have this, we are going to create our first puzzle. And for this puzzle, we will have a... So the puzzle will store our gate. That will be private, game object, and that's going to be the exit gate, like so. Actually, one thing I want to do is just type no here so we don't get the yellow warning. And then on start, the exit gate, the game, and it will be set to true. And of course, we will have a private function which will disable it. So we'll have private void complete puzzle. 
and complete puzzle will just set this to false like so <clears throat> for this puzzle we have two objects we have which is the puzzle object so we will do a list because every puzzle might have different amount of objects so private list and we will have puzzle no let's just call it I feel like trigger colors is a bad name for it so this is called a puzzle let's name this to puzzle trigger we need to change this also in the puzzles class here puzzle trigger there we go better uh, Trigger. Like so. What have I done? Ah, there we go. And now that we have this, we just type in puzzle trigger here at the top. That's going to be puzzle triggers is equal to new list, like so. With this, we have a declaration of a puzzle. And what we will do is every single time we trigger one of the puzzles, we will reference back to this script here, which is the main uh, puzzle uh, piece. And what we'll do here is we'll check their state of completion. So we will have a private pool, and this is going to be called is completed, like so. Now, by default, is completed will be set to false. And every and then, of course, since this is a very simple puzzle, we'll set this to true, and we will set this to false, like so. However, each time we do enter or exit, we want to make a call to our puzzle. So what we'll have here is we'll have a private int, and this is going to be called our the completion index count. And that's something that's going to be set to zero by default so always on start and then let's create a public function called check for completion like so let's add a little bit of commenting so sets up the default puzzle settings um disables the gate when the puzzle is completed it performs a check to see if the puzzle is completed or not stores all puzzle components now something that we'll actually have to do is separate the puzzle trigger from uh, we'll have to slightly change this in the future if we want to play around with puzzles a bit better, but that's okay for now. So this is a stores object that blocks advancement to the next level. So we have this, we have this. Let's add some code here. This is actually okay. Material step change on unit collision. State of the puzzle piece. Render component that allows materials to be changed. There we go. So now that we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to call check for completion every single time we enter and leave. So we all need to store a, a reference to the puzzle. But we don't want to. So we don't want to make this static because we'll have many puzzles that all have this script. So we need to have a reference to this specific puzzle. So we'll do private. We'll actually make it a serializable field to make our life easier. And so we'll do private puzzle. It's going to be the um, puzzle parent, I guess. We can call it, set it to null for now. In fact, what we can do is, rather than making it private, since we have our puzzle and we all have triggers, and I believe that will be neater in a hierarchy as well. We can drag both of our triggers into the puzzle. Now, if we attach the puzzle here, let's get the gate and put the gate inside the puzzle as well. 
Now we put the gate inside, but for the other ones we will do um, where are we? Puzzle pairing. And that's going to be equal to this.gameObject.parent. Yep, component in parent. And that's going to be our puzzle. So now you've grabbed the component without making it serializable. Just by following this little structure of ours. Now that we have puzzle parent referred, we just do puzzle parent. Dot. And what we're looking for is check for completion. Now, of course, we need to check for completion in here as well. And what we're going to send through is a boolean. So boolean is completed, like so. So let's put in our is completed through in here and is completed through in here. And what's going to happen here is we will do So here I have, so each time, so we'll do something simple as it is completed. Then we'll do completion index plus plus. This might be need to change later slightly, but we're just going to leave that now. And else we'll do completion index minus minus. And then we'll do another if check, which we'll do simply if our puzzle triggers dot count is the same as completion index minus one then we want to call puzzle completed now to help with visualizing what's happening you will set this up in here and give this a try so let's select our puzzle we now have our index at zero let's move some characters higher so now we change this to one now if we exit we will change it to zero oh it should be a plus actually Wait, we didn't add the puzzles, did we? That's right. I forgot to add the puzzles. One and two. There we go. Now we have both of our puzzles in. So we've added the first puzzle. And it's wrong again. Come on, care code. Let's just do a quick, quick keybook.log. What's this number? Come on, all of you guys, step in. So, puzzle selected, it's currently at zero. I like how they both walked into each other. So, first guy goes in, sets it to one, that's fine. He walks out, sets it back to zero. This guy goes into that one, sets it to one. And now it's both at the number, which should equal to it, but it's not. Why is it not working? What is our puzzle count at this point? Let's just try that one. I feel like this is really, I feel like I'm just being really dumb. But that's fine. It's too early in the morning for me. 
there we go. So zero one. Um, We don't need that. I guess because count doesn't start counting from zero, that would be just, uh, yeah, it just counts as one and two. I don't know why I was thinking otherwise. Here we go. There you go. And now we're free to proceed to the next level. And basically, that's what we are going to do for all of the uh, puzzles. Of course, they'll be different. They'll require the player to do various actions. And what we're going to do is, instead of having all of the characters here, we're just going to create a spawn point instead for them. So let's just start working visually towards that goal now. So let's create a see-through object, and that's going to be called our unit spawner. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a limited amount of units that you can spawn per map. and uh, units will only be possible to move until they get to triggers, I think. Once you put them in the correct trigger, they will no longer be able to enter. You will think about it later. But let's create a new box and let's start. We need to start changing this base script on how it functions. So let's move this out and it's going to be rename player spawner. Actually, let's leave it in as it's part of it. We'll do remove this for now. And I believe that's it. So in the next part, we will work on spawning the units correctly and freezing them in. What well, I think we'll also add is a color change to them when they become an active as well. Or maybe rather than having spawners, we will just have the set amount of units per tile and they only become available once a new one enters their area or something like that. Uh, either way, I'll think about it later. This is it for today. Thanks for watching. And I'll be there doing this again tomorrow.